Hi there, Chris Oddy of Marsden's Accountants here. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about anyone who's thinking of selling your rental property um, and five things that you need to do slash consider. Um, so the first thing that you should really do if you have, if obviously if you've been renting your property and you have an accountant, um, when you first come to the idea that you want to sell it, the first thing to do really is get in contact with one um, and, and plan what's going to happen. Because if you don't do that, what happens is when you sell the property and then if you think about it, you may then realise that you've got this big capital gains tax bill to pay and it may not be the case that you wanted to sell at that point. Um, but at that point, it's too late and you'll have to, you know, pay the bill. So it's always better before you make any decision like that to obviously speak to your accountant or if you haven't got an accountant yet, contact one that can help with you. So at Marsden's, we help many clients with this. Um, so, yeah, if you want to get in contact with us, we'll be more than happy to help. Um, and then at that point, you can kind of look at roughly what your tax bill is going to be um, for this and obviously take into consideration is that the right decision that you want to do at that point um, so the second kind of thing that you need to do is obviously again getting into contact with them but obviously is considering when the sale does go through that's when you then have to go back to them and say look the sale's gone through now here is the completion statement um, we need to get a couple of games tax sorted so that would be the third thing, obviously, is, is getting any information together that your accountant may need. Or if you're recently signing up for one, then obviously they may need some more information that um, your current accountant would have if you had one already. So things that they would need is obviously like your confirmation statement. Um, because of the way that the rules are with capital gains tax now and that everything has to be disclosed within 60 days, um, they'll need obviously an estimate of what your income is going to be for the year because those kind of things are included in your capital gains to work out what tax band um, you're in and whether it'll push you into a different one um, to identify how much is going to be taxed at. Um, so that's the kind of information. If you're new to an accountant, they may also need the confirmation statement of when you purchased the property. If you inherited it or anything like that, we'll also need it. We'd need an evaluation of what the property was worth at the time. Um, but generally, if you've paid for a property, you'll, you'll have a completion statement from your solicitor when that sale went through. Um, so then obviously the fourth thing is then getting ready to actually prepare the disclosure. So we have to register with the um, capital gains tax uh, online. So essentially the, you, the client, would have to do that yourself. You would register. We would also register. And then essentially we, we link those together. Um, and then that gives the accountant the permission in order to um, go ahead and start your submission with um, HMRC. Obviously, we'd have to do the calculations first, um, but it's important to make sure that that's set up nice and early so if there is any problems, we can sort them and there's no pressure when it comes to the end of the 60 days because 60 days can fly by. Um, so it's, it's definitely best to get it sorted as soon as possible to make sure that you reach that deadline and there's no penalties or, any, or anything involved. Um, and then the final thing is obviously just preparing the capital gain tax, getting it submitted, um, and then obviously at that point you have to pay the um, the capital gains tax that's due. But that doesn't mean that we're then finished at that point, because if you've got a rental property, you've probably had rent in the year. So you'll still also have to do a tax return for that. And your capital gains tax, even though you would have already paid it, will still go on your tax return. Um, and then if there were any, you know, when you're estimating what your income is going to be for the year, if there was any differences, there may be slightly more or less tax to pay, depending on whether the thing, figure was correct or not. Um, so there's that to consider. And then the other thing to consider is, will this actually be your final tax return? Because again, that will depend on when you've sold the property. Uh, and this is just considering if the only reason you're doing a tax return is because you've got rental income there, right? there are other reasons why you might be doing one. Um, but essentially, if you were renting the property in one year, and say you stopped renting it in December, 2023, um, but didn't sell the property until let's just say the 25th of April 2024, you would have to do your tax return for your rental accounts like normal for your 2024 um, tax return. And then you'd still also require a 2025 tax return, even though you'll have no rental income, because the capital gains tax will need to go on your tax return for that year as well. So there's all these things to consider. Um, but if you sign up with a, an accountant that deals with this, they'll be able to help you along the process. So if you are looking for an accountant to help with your capital gains tax, please give us a contact. You can either email admin at marsdoms.co.uk if you have any queries um, or if you want to book a meeting 
or the alternative is to give us a call on 01752 344 582 uh, and I'm sure we can help you so yeah thank you for listening bye